Hello friends and welcome back. So today, it looks like I find myself surrounded by a whole heap of iron-on patches, buttons and fabric, and why? Well, Alex has dumped a whole bunch of her clothes on me which aren't quite up to her kawaii standards and asked if I can improve them to any degree at all. I'm not saying she's an impulse buyer, but let's face it, if she thought more about the things that she bought, we wouldn't be in this position to start with, but I digress. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you all what you might be able to do if you've got clothes at home which aren't quite living up to your standards, if you've got some iron-on patches, maybe some buttons, or anything else that's cute and adorable that you want to add to those clothes, it's actually quite easy to do. So to start with, we've got this pinafore, which Alex says she loves, but there's nothing all that interesting about it. It's just pastel pink, and also the straps have been driving her absolutely insane. So she's asked if I could maybe add something to the front right about here, and also shorten these straps. So what we've done is we've put this on Alex, got the straps to the right length. I'm gonna see if I can trim the ends down, stitch them back together, and then attach them so they don't flop around like dead fish. We've also got this lovely purple pullover, which is nice and all, and it even does have its own little badge up the top. And at first I did think it made some sense. I thought it was meant to say Arctic Bear, but then I'm looking a little bit closer and it's not bear, it's besser. And it's not even Arctic, it's Arctic. So I think we can just remove that entirely and then replace that with something a little bit more fun and interesting. These gingham, gingham, or gangjum, however you want to say it. Gingham. These pants, see, these pants with this pattern, really cute, really frilly, but there's nothing else on them. They're a little bit boring, I suppose. So we're gonna add a whole bunch of patches to this one, so that's gonna be a little bit of fun. And this is what I'm looking most forward to, this beautiful pink set from Honeybum. We're gonna add a massive, and I mean a massive unicorn patch to the back. Maybe like a little rainbow somewhere on the front, and then on the skirt, we're gonna see if we can match that aesthetic with some more rainbows or like a little magical stamp. Like, I've got a whole bunch of patches in front of me, and I'm just gonna get creative with them all. On top of that, I thought I'd give you guys a little project that you could also do at home. So Alex has shown me this Hello Kitty tote bag, and it is adorable. So what I thought we'd do is take inspiration from this to try and create something, maybe not the same, but a little bit similar. So I've picked up, some gingham fabric in a pastel pink and white. And then with one of these patches, I'm gonna see if I can create something almost the same. So dimension wise, and then uh, stick something on the front. And if I can actually figure out how to do it, I'd love to do some wording underneath whatever patch I use. So with all of that in mind, that's a lot to do. Let's see if we can actually accomplish it all. Right, so I decided to start with the iron on patches because me being me, I figured let's start easy and then go on to the difficult stuff. Assumedly that the tote bag since it requires stitching and planning and cutting and trimming and all that sort of fun stuff, I figured that one would be a little bit more difficult. So let's start with the iron-on patches. And why would I need to do an instructional tutorial first on how to put on an iron-on patch? The name itself seems to imply you just iron it on. Little did I know there are some little tidbits of information that would be quite useful. For example, just ironing it on doesn't quite seem to do the trick. You have to iron it at a fairly high temperature and also hold it for anywhere between a minute and a half to three. So my first couple of patches, they didn't quite hold and bond to the fabric as well as I'd like. So I had to keep going over the top of them. So starting with the Honey Bum set, I put the giant unicorn on the back and it looked absolutely fantastic. On the skirt, like I said, I was just doing a single unicorn and on the back pocket, I did decide that magical was the little slogan to go with. And then to wrap it all up, we put the rainbow on the front pocket. So successfully increasing the kawaii-ness of this entire outfit by at least tenfold. This thing looks incredible. Honestly, it is the one that I'm most proud of out of all of the outfits that I'm actually doing up with patches today. The way it all fits together, the way that the unicorn patch seemed to fit, it was like it was made for the back of this top. Incredible. Next up, this purple pullover. There wasn't much to do on this besides remove that heinous badge on the very front. And so it had to go. So this one was quite easy to remove. Just get your little stitch picker and cut those threads, pull them away, and it fell off without a hitch. The patch that I used to replace it, it's kind of reminiscent of a lazy oaf sort of feel, which I thought was kind of cool for the pullover. It gave the whole thing just a very casual, relaxed vibe, which is a lot better than where it originally started. So that was very straightforward. And now that I've learned that I do actually need to hold the iron to the fabric for an extended period of time, not too long though. This is the thing with patches. You hold it too short, it doesn't stick. You hold it too long, near either burning the patch itself or the fabric. So you kind of have to move the iron around a little bit, concentrating that heat in the area. And a pro tip for all of you out there, start on the patch side. So get your cloth, put it over the patch, start on that side. Then after you've mostly adhered it, 
flip the garment over and iron from the reverse side. So this pullover now is 100% more Alex. I think she can wear this with a lot of different outfits. It's just gonna be fantastic. A good all-rounder or if she's just feeling like it, she can wear it while she's watching TV. I don't know. Now the next one I was doing, this is a pitiful. Now she has worn this before and I think she kind of loves it, but she does keep getting irritated with the straps, kind of getting in her way. Plus it's a little bit bland. So what we're doing on this one, we are adding the patch to the front again, using all the tips and tricks that I picked up along the way to this point, ironing from the front side, ironing to the back side, getting it nice and stuck on firm. The patch went off without a hitch. It was fantastic. The next step that I had to go through is actually shortening these straps. How I figured I'd do it is I did a little bit of a hodgepodge job, but essentially all I did was cut them shorter to the length that she needed, sewed up the loose end that was left, and then I tucked it in behind and just gave a couple of quick holding stitches. Like honestly, it seems to work fine. You can barely see it. It is a little bit obvious to the naked eye when you get right up close, but from a distance, you'll never know. So now with two minor modifications, this fits Alex a lot better. She doesn't have to worry about the straps falling everywhere, getting in her way. Plus, it's got this cute little flying unicorn on the very front. I guess that would be called a Pegasus then. I mean, does this give it a My Little Pony vibe now? I, I don't know. Like, is that one of the characters? Could be. But for the last garment that I'm modifying just with patches alone, it's gonna be these fantastic gingham, gingham, gangam pants, whatever. But no matter what they're called, these pants were the perfect candidate for using these cute little like bird and flower patches that we got in like these little packets. So I think I used two of these packets for the pants and they came with a various assortment and they kind of look cute. They're like little quilted birds. The pattern on them is like this little quilting pattern. It's adorable. So just laying them out on the pants in a rather random pattern, but somewhat aesthetic. You had to keep that in mind. Okay, so the gingham pants are done. Gingham. 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 I like that. Although since I did only have two packets, I think I'm going to have to revisit these pants and put a couple more on. Maybe go all the way down the legs and then also go on the reverse side. So I don't know when I'm going to be able to do that. Probably will not show you guys that because let's be honest, you've already seen how to do it. The idea now is you go and get your own patches and you can take it to the next level. So any garments that you have, this is what you can do with them. Just with a couple of simple patches, you can turn a bland, simple garment into something fantastic and outrageous. So with all the patches aside, I decided to wrap up with what I assumed was going to be the harder part of it all, the tote bag. Now to do the tote bag, I basically had to work out what parts and components did I need. Now, oddly enough, this looks like they've made the base out of two separate pieces of fabric. They've stitched two semi-circles together. Now I'm not sure why they do that. That's just making the entire design process a little bit harder, an entirely new line that you had to stitch. Like there's a seam running down the very bottom of the bag. I'm guessing they must have done this to save fabric when cutting from a template. So when you've got a big giant sheet of fabric and you're trying to cut your fabric as efficiently as possible, maybe it's more efficient to cut, you know, semi-circles all the way along one of the edges and then cut like a long strip down the center that you're gonna do the side of the bag with. I don't know. So basically, I wanted to make my bag as easy to assemble as possible. I wanted as few pieces as I could possibly get, so I'm not doing semicircles on the base. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut out one single circle, and I worked out that I roughly needed something with a diameter of seven and a half centimeters. Now, how did I measure that? The easiest way I found was getting a pin, some string, and a pen. Basically what you do, tie the string around the pen, and then tie a knot in the string at half of seven and a half, so well, actually maybe I made it eight centimeters and I just did four centimeters. You know what, just the math doesn't matter too much. However big you want your circle, measure half that distance on a string and then put a pin through that point. Then grab your pin, put it down in the center of your fabric that you want to cut and then rotate your pen around that using the string as a guide. So pull the string tight and then rotate it around. What you should get is a perfectly even circle that you can then cut along that line and you've got your perfect bottom for this tote bag. But be sure that you make it slightly bigger than you want your bag to be in total. So I think I added half a centimetre around the entire circumference because when I stitch it all together, you're gonna to lose some of that length. The next part of the bag is basically just one long strip, which is going to sew all the way around the base of the bag and then come together at a point. And so that's gonna have your, your bottom and your sides of the bag. So to do that, I had to work out the circumference of my circle. To work that out, I used my trusty calculator and something that school actually taught me that was useful. So the calculation, I'm just gonna put up there. It's very straightforward. It's 3.1415, depending on how accurate you wanna get multiplied by, you can kind of simplify it to be multiplied by the diameter, or you can actually do two times 3.1415 times the radius, which is half of the width of your circle. 
Once you've thrown that into a calculator or done it on paper if you're super gifted, not like me, that should tell you how long you want your strip of fabric to be. And then again, I added a little bit to the end, so maybe like half a centimetre each end, so one full centimetre added to the length, and that's just to give you area to stitch together. And then basically, I just pinned this length all the way around the circumference of my circle and then stitched that together. Now, this was the difficult part because trying to sew around a circle, you're constantly having to turn it so the fabric is bunching up, it's not behaving the way you want it to. I was pulling my hair out. The number of times this sewing machine jammed, I honestly almost gave up. I thought that there was something I was doing wrong and kind of turned out that there was. I think I didn't have it strung quite tight enough just with the threading through the machine, so I tightened that up and it seemed to work a little bit better. Then after you've got this all attached to your circle, you should have two loose ends. Now at this point, I stitched up that end and realized something. Earlier on, I'd actually flipped the fabric over to create the little hole that my thread is going to run through around the top to create the drawstrings. Turns out when I stitched up the side, I stitched through that section, which basically closed off one side so I couldn't thread the string all the way through. But no matter, there was a way around it. What I did is on the inside of the bag, I just made two small incisions either side of the uh, threaded channel that I closed off, and that allowed me to work my fabric around that. So after you've got your bag all stitched together, you can use some string to act as your pull ties. I actually use these awesome little tassels. They come with a meter long thread at the end, which was perfect. So I cut the loop so I had two loose ends and then used a bobby pin just to thread it through the hole in the bag and go all the way around the edges. After that's all done, you should be able to tie the loose ends back together, hide the knot within the bag itself, and you have got yourself a awesome, cute little tote bag. But where's the decorations, you say? Well, I've got patches left over. So I thought what would really tie this bag together is a good Atama patch. So I grabbed one of those and then ironed it on, same as the last ones before, and bing, bang, boom, you have got yourself a Good Atama tote bag. And so with all of that done, I've been left with these outfits plus this fantastic tote bag. Now, I think there are some improvements that I could actually make on the tote bag especially. Uh, maybe if I didn't sew through the channel that I meant to be threading the string, because I didn't get round to doing any words in thread on this because after I'd sewn it all together I realised how am I going to fit this onto the sewing machine and have the manoeuvrability to actually get this done. So. I couldn't manage that. If, however, I'd done it before sewing the entire thing together, I might have been able to get away with it. So that's an improvement that I will make for the next round, but for the moment, I'm actually not too upset with how it's turned out. I think Alex is gonna enjoy it. This fits like a phone, a, a purse, um, it fits like anything you wanna throw in this really, as long as it doesn't exceed the carrying capacity of this bag. Unfortunately, it's not like Hermione's miracle bag that can hold the entire world in it. It's, it's pretty small. You can't fit much in here, but for a cute little outfit and only a couple of items, it's fantastic. This has been a short one today, but I was just hoping that if you are out there and you have some patches lying around and don't really know what to do with them, experiment, see what you can come up with, because this is a very simple and easy way to just change the look of an outfit. If something's in your wardrobe and it just needs a bit of a revamp, or it's something new that you just don't quite like enough, you can improve things, and also, if you've got a sewing machine, a bit of spare time and a calculator, this is a fun little project. Honestly, it took me about 30 minutes and I think I could definitely refine that time frame. I'd never used the sewing machine before that I was working on. I was having all sorts of issues, but if you've got one that you're familiar with, can use quickly and efficiently, this is a very simple, very quick project that doesn't actually take up too much fabric. So as usual, I hope you enjoyed yourself, hope you're feeling inspired, and now that I've got a sewing machine handy, I'm almost considering trying to get into some sort of cosplay outfit. So. I don't know when I'm going to have time for that, but I mean, I did just finish watching Castlevania and some of the outfits in that show are top shelf stuff and I'm really tempted to try and put one together. But that could be a stretch goal because at the moment, this is probably about my skill level. So we'll see what happens in that regard. But as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already and make sure the bell notification is on. That way you do get alerted. And feel free to follow me on Instagram. Uh, same tag, suit up Sam, if it interests you. But beyond that, hope you're all having a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.